Welcome to Business Coaching Secrets with Carl Bryan. If you want to attract new high-end coaching clients, fill live events, and build a wildly profitable coaching practice where business owners pay, stay, and refer, you've come to the right place. In this podcast, Carl provides his keys to the kingdom for finding and signing high-paying clients and building the coaching business of your dreams. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. Hope everybody's doing good. Carl Bryan coming at you. I'm here sans road dog today. He had a prior engagement and I told him to not worry about it. So here we are. Hopefully I'll fly the flag. Um, so he fired me through some messages by a text. So what I'll do is I'll rattle those off. Um, and he sent a couple notes with them. So we'll, we'll see how we go here. So question number one from one road dog, you have a unique take on discounting. Can you explain your stance slash reason for your stance? Okay. So question on discount. I think this is a kind of like a follow-up question from, um, a few weeks back, but, um, okay. So you have a unique take on discounting. So discount, you gotta be careful with this. Um, if you offer it, if your client offers a 10% discount, they have to sell 33% more to break even. Think about the logic behind that. The most difficult thing you can do in business is generate a lead and generate a client or actually the most expensive thing you can do. Generate generate a lead, generate a client. So to be giving away, like if you give a 10% discount, you have to get 33% more. This is on average, by the way, but assume these numbers to be pretty close. You got to bring in 33% more to break even, right? So on the flip side of that, if you raise your prices by 10%, you need to bring in significantly less clients um, to do significantly better. So I, I think it's a question over chess over checkers, you know, you need to have a strategy. Um, the end goal is to have a successful and profitable, you know, month, quarter, year um, for your company, right? Don't lose sight. That do not confuse. Be don't confuse being busy with being successful, right? Um, so there's different ways to do discount. Like people do. Like let's say there's um, 50% off two for one, and then buy one get one free. That's three different ways of saying the exact same thing, right? 50% off, two for one, or buy one, get one free. Well, the buy one, get one free will absolutely just, well, the buy one, get one free will outperform the other. And in many cases, literally destroy it, right? So just keep that in mind. So you want to be thinking, um, you know, strategy. You want to take maybe a little bit of research before you launch into your discount strategy. Your client launches into their discount strategy and throw it around a 50% discount. My heavens, you got to be very, very, if you have to, if you offer a 10% discount and have to sell, sell 33% more to break even, imagine what you got to do when you're offering 50% and very few businesses nowadays offer a 10% discount. And why? Because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't motivate anybody. It doesn't achieve the goal, but they still do it. And by the way, but they don't offer differences. They don't offer a 10% because it doesn't work. They then offer a 25% discount, right? So possibly not the next game, not, not the best, um, roadmap for your client. But how about I give you this? What about like a $60 million discount strategy? And this would be um, via Gary Vaynerchuk, who built his family liquor store from three to 60 million bucks, three million to 60 million in annual sales. Maybe that makes it a $57 million strategy instead of 60 million. I'll have to think about that. But anyway, it's not bad for a 20 year old that was trading baseball cards. Uh, before taking over his family liquor store business, um, his advertising strategy was basically a loss leader, right? So he would advertise, here's what he do. He would advertise the most popular brands, right? Just go to the cash register. What are the, you know, what are the most popular and what are the best branded? What are the most popular, you know, beers and alcohols, right? And he had uh, Budweiser, Coors Light, let's assume, I don't know, Jim Beam, Canadian club. Let's give the Canadians a bit of a shout out there. And then there's other top sellers that I can't think of. Maybe I'm thinking of a vodka, um, absolute vodka. I don't know. Is that on there? I don't think that would have been back when he was doing it, by the way. I think that might be a little bit on the new side, but at the end of the day, the most popular, um, 
bits of booze and then the top sellers. And he promoted those via advertising at below cost. As in the store lost money when someone came in and bought what he actually advertised. So, and obviously that was lower um, than what the competition was selling it for, right? Because again, I, they're not thinking along these same lines, chess over checkers, right? Um, and, and by the way, people who drink spend time with other people who drink. So there's a bit of a broader strategy here that revolves, you know, referrals and word of mouth, et cetera. But customers would walk in for the discounted offers, call it Coors Light, and then story, storytelling would take over. As in he had salespeople working on the floor of his liquor store. And of course, he was the number one sales guy, right? So he'd encourage, and just keep in mind, this is all storytelling and you will get better, your clients will get better, you'll be, you'll, you know, you get better at storytelling the more you practice it like anyone, right? So he'd encourage the, the Coors Light or the Jim Beam or the Canadian club guy to also try a craft, let's go Coors Light, right? And then he gets them to, to you know, kind of try a craft brew that's similar, but far superior for a bunch of both watering reasons that, would probably include, you know, it's better for you, it's lower calories, it's better tasting uh, because of the way that it's made and blah, 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 blah. And the age, there's, uh, you know, you'll get no headache the next day if you're going to, if you're going to drink six when well, you should have drank two, um, the next day you'll be laughing, right? And, and by the way, you'd also no doubt mention, why not support a local or a family owned smaller type business as in the craft brewery versus Coors Light that no one's ever going to know, no one's ever going to care. You're not supporting a family at that stage, right? Um, and I, I'd like to think that's an easy story to tell, right? Um, and by the way, and then complement that with upsell, you know, one time, you know, you're familiar with internet marketing, right? OTO, one time offer, like, you know, you you buy the book and then they say, hey, for eight bucks, we'll give you the audio book, that kind of thing, right? So they also want you to bring home a bottle of red for your wife, right? And again, tell them a story about some killer wine. They just got in the other wives are raving about it or maybe the husbands are raving about it i don't know right and and you know again and for a bunch of reasons they're just literally raving about this alcohol right um so i'm sure you worked out already but the ones they were storytelling as in the craft brew and then the red wine that they would guide them towards like the ones they were recommending were the boutique labels and they had high high gross profit margins right so coors light you're making a tight margin and the local craft brew, um, you're making a higher gross profit margin, right? And remember, gross profit margin is the holy grail of a business. So these boutique and craft sales easily made up for any losses that they took on the Budweiser and the Jim Beam, right? Plus, and really importantly here, remember there's chess over tech checkers. Um, the clients would tend to become more loyal to the smaller craft options, right? Um, or hang on. I didn't say that right, that they're more loyal to the smaller craft options than they are to Coors Light, right? And and by the way, significantly more likely to recommend them to their buddies. And then presumably those craft brews um, weren't available in other liquor stores, right? Because they weren't mass produced. So, so basically did the math and it worked ridiculously well. Um, so I just want you to think, so Gary Vaynerchuk went from three to 60 million and he had other strategies at play. I mean, I don't want to make out like this is the only one because it's not. Uh, but at the end of the day, he is basically going, um, he's advertising radio, direct mail, Facebook, et cetera, uh, to locals. And then he is bringing them in and he is losing money on Coors Light and Jim Beam and really popular stuff that would draw a crowd. Um, and then when they came in, he, and sometimes they would lose money. When that individual walked in, bought Jim Beam, walked out, they lost they lost money versus made, made money on that sale. But what they found is when they led those individuals via storytelling to craft brews and red wine and stuff with high gross profit margins that wasn't mass produced and had a story and that they could talk about it. And again, were significantly smaller, which he found that um, led to significantly more um, loyalty, right? Like they'd come back, oh man, that beer was amazing. Look, I want to buy it again, right? I want to buy a six pack for my bud. Um, so basically that worked ridiculously well, but again, it's chess over checkers and at any given night and any given moment of time, you could see how they were losing money, right? But over the long haul, looking real good. And, and by the way, let's get super crazy. Like you could advertise 
So if you took that same approach, you could advertise to be the only business coach in town that operates on 7.5% um, of your client's additional revenues. Could you do that, right? Or maybe you're using our software that'll find anybody 100 grand in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising, right? Find them 100 grand in record time, like be promoting that, right? So, um, but and that, I gotta tell you, if you advertise that, in fact, we talked to somebody, Tim, in the open, in the, uh, in the pre-show, but he's basically doing exactly that in a clever way with some online, um, networking groups and he, he I think he said he got himself like 85 appointments in short period I'm gonna call it 90 days I can't remember what he said but it wasn't a lot of time and it rhymed with like 90 appointments um, doing pretty darn well and then I, I kind of parlayed that into ultimately what he was doing is he's shaking trees you know what I mean like he's really he's putting his message he's got a good strong message he's very passionate about it he's really good at delivering on it and he's, he's shaking trees and putting it out there consistently, and then people are taking him up on it, right? So to be very, very clear, what you need to do is you need to come up with a really killer offer that sounds good, like a bit of a loss leader. Like if you find somebody 100 grand in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising, right? Like again, you're basically delivering prior, um, you know, to engaging your clients um, you, you know what I mean? Like you're finding them the money before you're hitting their credit card, right? It's pretty obvious. I'm going to find you hundred grand in 45 minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising. I'm paying my way. Anyway, so you could be thinking about that. Um, it's a similar kind of strategy, not hundred percent parallel, but could be played with as the seven, you know, 7.5%. What did I say of your clients? Um, additional gross revenues, right? Anyway, so. Um, and, and by the way, you'd parlay that, but just really importantly, you got to close the loop, right? You're going to find them hundred grand in 45 minutes without spending a dollar marketing or advertising. And then of course, in an influential way, you're going to convince them that it's a really, really good idea that they start paying you, you know, two to $5,000 a month, which is 24,000, 60,000 over the year for you to now help them realize the hundred thousand dollars because I found it for you in really in record time, but now I'm going to deliver, right? And frankly, if it's done properly, it's it's a bit candy from a baby ish, uh, but you got to shake some trees. And then, by the way, so you're sitting here and you're like, I haven't. If you haven't got a client in thirty days, so depending upon what day it is, but let's assume it's Wednesday. You're listening to this on Tuesday and Monday. You didn't make any calls. You didn't speak to any business owners. You didn't influence them, right? Uh, in fact, I literally think I sent out an email today as I record. And I basically just said, you know, somebody asked me, um, you know, Carl, why, why would I help three business owners a day without any expectation for payment? And I basically just answered, because you can't, <laughs> right? It's that simple, right? Because you can't, you know, I write a daily email, do this podcast, do all kinds of different, you know, influencing business owners left, right, and center who are not paying. Your marketing should always influence significantly more people than your or client list ever could, right? So I don't know. That's what I uh, I think. But shaking some ba you know, shaking some trees. Um, I think you'll you'll end up in a good spot if you've got a really really good offer that you're highly passionate about. And of course, we provide our coaches software and you know a pitch of being able to find them a hundred grand in forty five minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising. And I just if you say that properly with some mojo, just change the numbers eighty nine grand, one hundred eleven grand. Instead of 45 minutes, make it, you know, an hour, make it an hour and a half, make it 90 minutes. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's really hard to say no to. I've said properly for the average business owner, the landscaper, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, as I often say. But anyways, okay, so um, that's discounting. Maybe that's a way of looking at it, but be very, very cautious with your discounting for your clients discounting that your client, I don't need to meet your client, the landscaper or the the carpet cleaner or the you know, pest control guy or the roofer to know that they don't think about discounting the way that I just described it. And they certainly don't think along the lines of a 10% discount means they get to sell 33% more to break even in <laughs> sanity. Okay. And then road dog. Okay. So he sent a funny message, which I'm not going to read. Uh, but then basically just said, here are three questions. We always get answered these and, I have answered these in different ways a thousand different times. So, but sometimes what you got to do is you got to hear the same answer over again. So what the heck we'll do it. So best way to form a 
JV with an accountant. Um, so again, you know, this is uh, possibly, you know, rewind um, or repeat of a very popular answer that I've given many times. But the first look, if I'm going to an accountant, I don't care who I'm going to. I'm going to a magazine. I'm going to a landscaper. I'm going to a pool company. I'm going to the accountant, the bookkeeper, the promotional company. The first thing I do is I establish what their problem is, and then I try to solve it. Like that's the way to anybody's heart, right? Um, you know, like you want to real, you want to get a date, and you want that date to stick around. Go look. So, what do you want? And then have a look at their answers, and then provide it to them. You know what I mean? And believe me, different people want different things. And if you know anything about the love languages, that will, you know, some are words of affirmation, and then there's people who love gifts, etc. So you guys probably know about that. But if you don't read love languages, because it's a fabulous book, and you could get a lot about coaching. Like every coaching client isn't looking for the same thing. You know, and absolutely not. Um, a lot of the time they're looking for a friend, quite frankly, that they can, you know, not, not, I don't want to look friend. You got to be a lot more, you know, you got to make sure that you're solving business problems along the way, but do it in a very, very friendly way. Whereas some aren't looking for a buddy at all. Like they just want to get to it and look, let's, you're here to solve my business problems. Let's solve, let's line them up and let's knock them down and then keep moving. Right. But anyway, so if you want me to form a joint venture with an accountant or sign up an accountant as a client, I identify their problems and then I solve them. Right. And let me tell you the accountant's problem in case you don't know and you haven't heard me say this. The accountant, I mean, they've got a few different problems, but this is top three for sure. Probably number one where their clients come in to see them once a year. These are the business owners. And it's always at the same time. It's three months after the year is over. And then, of course, it's tax time. And then they expect the taxes to be done in record time. They want to pay next to nothing. And oh, by the way, and they want you to, you know, they want that rose petal type um, service, right? Red carpet, rose petal, right? Maybe a combination of both. Um, but at the end of the day, that's, that's what they want. So if you were an accountant, how enjoyable would that 90 day period be? And you could imagine it's stressful. Um, it's just crazy and it shouldn't, it doesn't need to be that way. And it shouldn't be that way, quite frankly, but the business owners are, do the same thing. So if they wanted to combat that, how about this? I go to the accountant and say, look, give me three clients. Don't give me all. What's the, the, the accountant doesn't want to give you every client they ever met, right? That's no good. Right. So just give me a test drive. Take me for a test drive. Give me three clients, not your best, not your worst in the middle somewhere that come in to see you once a year and kind of, you know, pass this, you know, this tax season test where they come and become part of the problem. And let me work with those three. And here's my guarantee, Dave, the accountant, right? Not dangerous, Dave, by the way, that's just Dave. Dave, the accountant. Um, and, what I, and, and he sends me three people. And then what I also, this is my guarantee them is that the three people he sends me will not participate in tax season because I will categorically guarantee that this individual comes in to see him four times a year at a like close to a minimum, probably 10 times a year because I want to be able to keep a really good up-to-date scoreboard. And uh, basically that, and I just say, so these, these three people will not participate in tax season. And by the way, when the client goes to see the accountant four times a year, 10 times a year versus once a year, guess what? They pay two, four, 10 times. They pay significantly more. Do you think the accountant likes that? Of course the accountant likes that. And by the way, the accountant also likes to do, the accountant's an accountant for a reason. He likes to do accounting, right? But he wants to do it in the right, the rush, 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 rush tax season stuff is what he hates or her. Uh, but during the year where they can be creative and crafty and educate their clients, say, oh, we'll do this that way. You know, oh, look, this depreciates. Um, so we should lease it. That appreciates. So we should buy it. You know, just giving some, you know, good advice advice explaining amortization depreci depreciation is a superpower of a good accountant you may or may not realize that uh, but at the end of the day the accountant can actually do the stuff that it, he, he or she wants to do and they will save you so much in tax it'll blow you away but when you go see them once a year they don't have the ability to move anything around like the numbers are in the conversation's over there's there's no uh, there's only so much there's very little they can do at that stage nor do they want to because they're so damn busy they need to just get it off of they need to keep you compliant with the government, keep you out of jail, and you know, move on to the next client who's also, you know, banging down the door for rose petal uh, service, despite the despite the fact that they're disorganized, right?
So, and that's, and again, a promotional company or like a, like a promotional company, what do they do? They sell hats, t-shirts, and mugs. What's the problem they have? People come in and order once and don't order again. So I go, okay, well, send me a few of the clients that you've worked with, not all of them. Send me three, not your best, not your worst, blah, 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 blah. You know, send me three. And one of the things I'll do, I'll make sure, like I'm a, I'm a big fan of, you know, hats, t-shirts, mugs, et cetera, uh, golf balls. So tell me what their order was last year. Let's call it 10 grand. Look, I will undertake, I can't guarantee anything, but I'll undertake to double um, their order, if not quadruple, you know, quadruple it. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to help them make their gear look better. I'm going to get, you know, we'll work on their branding and we'll make a, you know, we'll work on who we're going to put, you know, who we're going to put this merchandising material in front of, et cetera. Or you got a guy who sells advertising in a magazine. What's his problem? People come, they advertise and then they quit. So I say, well, guess what? Send me three advertisers. Don't send me your best. Don't send me your worst. Send me three. Take me for a test drive. Tell me what they spent last year. Call it 10 grand. I'm a huge fan, which I am, right? Advertising the profit is a superpower. So I say, look, whatever they advertised last year, I will make sure they continue to advertise and I'll try. And I have no guarantees here. I'm not magic, but I will do my best, my very best. And it's something I believe in, but I'll get them to spend twice as much this year on advertising. So I'll be like part of your retention. I don't know. You tell me like that. That's very, how does everybody else, everybody else goes to the account and it's Santa Claus versus the Grinch, right? It's like, oh, send me clients and then I'll give you a percentage of the money they send me. And you get surprised when you don't get a call back, right? It's like almost nobody's going for that, right? It feels a little bit wrong. It's a bit of a conflict of interest for, it is a conflict of interest for the accountant. Um, or, you know, debatably, of course, but just, you know, kind of. Um, so that's the, um, so that's the way to do it. So, uh, how to form a joint venture with an accountant. Um, I ask them, what do you want? And then I give it to them, right? Just that simple. Um, and by the way, I don't need, and I don't need to say, what do you want? I could ask in, in different ways. What are, what are the three biggest challenges slash obstacles you currently face in your business? And they answer, which one costs you the most money? This one. If you were to solve one of the three, which one would you want to solve? They probably give you the one that's most expensive, but you know, just ask them that. Okay, well, they just told you what to solve. Again, like if I'm selling somebody coaching, guess what I ask them? And this is all part of our process, right? Um, but if you go into the software, like the third question is, what are the three biggest challenges slash obstacles you currently face? And then they tell you. And then guess what you, and, you know, 45 minutes later, an hour and a half later, two hours, when I go to close, I'm just closing the loop on those three things. Like here's, and, and by the way, the answers will all be sales, marketing, systems, and um, staff. Sales, marketing, systems, staff. Always in those four. So anyway, so that's what I would, um, that's what I do. Um, best way to get a client. So this is <laughs> just, again, I've answered this, but you know what? Road dog ain't here, so I'm just spitting out. But we'll call this a, a three highlight questions that we get all the time. So the best best way to get a client in 30 days Real simple, I would, again, I would shake the tree. I would make things happen. I'd be putting out offers crazy. Um, I would not be embarrassed. Again, it's, you're not fear of failing. Your fear of, it, your, your, your bigger fear is people watching you fail, like on Facebook and Instagram, et cetera. Um, so don't worry about that, right? Worry about your, your family and your legacy and the clients and your marketing and you getting better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and by the way, they don't care. So um, best way to get a client in the 30 days is I, I would just shake some trees, but I would just go to folks um, that are, you know, if I, I'll assume I don't want to do a Facebook campaign and all, all that sort of stuff. And you don't have one going and you're semi new or you've already got a client list that you're just looking to supplement. You know, you, you, you take on 15 coaching clients at one time and you've got 11, you just need four more. You know, Facebook ads are not a solution to that. Or they are, but it's probably an expensive way to get those four clients when you just go get one joint venture partner and that one joint venture that I just mentioned, you know, part of the deal that I just made, I, I look, send me three. Don't send me your best. Don't send me your worst. Send me three. And then I'll make sure they do this, um, which is benefit, benefit, benefit to the person sending them to me. Um, so I, I would do a joint venture. One of the ways that I've done joint ventures in the past, which is very different than the way that I've seen it. Uh, keep in mind, my dad's a professional gambler. Spent a lot of time in Las Vegas. Um, well, he did. He lived there for a long time. And I've obviously, I've been to Vegas a number of times. 
Um, so gambling might, I might, I might be a little bit more aggressive on this is what I'm trying to say than you might be comfortable with. So I'll leave that for you. But I go to, okay, the, the guy selling advertising for the radio station as an example. Okay. Been doing it for 10 years, 15 years. Guy makes maybe a hundred grand. Remember when you make a hundred grand, he's really bringing home, you know, a little over 60, right? Little thing called income tax. So his six figure income doesn't feel like six figures. You're trying to work out where it all goes. But anyway, so I go to him and I say, Hey, look, do you know of anybody? You've been doing this for a long time. Don't do anything you're not comfortable with. But if you could introduce me to somebody and remember, I am going to make sure that whatever they spent on advertising, I'm going to undertake to double it and I'm going to keep them advertising. Right. Um, so I would ask the guy selling advertising for the radio station. And then I would, I would offer him like a thousand bucks for anybody who says yes. Right. I wouldn't, you know, the accountant, not, you know what I mean? That's probably not going to work, but the guy selling advertising, this will work. Um, so what I do is I do that, but I give them the thousand bucks up front. Right. It's like you buy the referral instead of like versus what it normally is, is, Hey, when you send me somebody, I'll send you a grant, which is similar to going to the accountant and say, look, send me clients and then I'll give you some money when they pay. And when they stop paying me, I'm going to stop paying you. Right. It's like not that exciting of a value proposition for them. So, so I pay the grand up front just to cement it all. And then you go, well, when you do that, do you get, you ever get screwed? And the answer is absolutely. Like, what do you think? But when I do it 10 times and I get screwed twice and then I get eight clients plus, 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 plus the relationship and everything else, I don't know. Just pull out your calculator and tell me how you're doing, right? And the two people, they, they didn't mean to screw me kind of thing. Like they, they just, you know what I mean? It just didn't work out as well as what they had planned. Um, you know what I mean? Like, they just, you know, and they tried their best and they, you know, there still sometimes comes a little bit later than what they they thought they could get this referral to me. I'm not going back and demanding my thousand bucks and being a real, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Puffing my chest over the thing, the, the opposite. You know what I mean? I'm just, again, I, and if I do it 10 times and eight people send and two people don't, you know, it's just, I don't know. You do the math and tell me where you end up. Pretty obvious. Um, get real results. Okay. So, okay. So I hope that getting clients in 90 days, uh, JV, um, I would also, oh, look, I've, I've talked about it before, like in so many different ways, but you know, I'm just going to people who like there's awards locally. I, I would do it. Look, we have a new program called local legends, which by the way, if you are not, um, if you're a client of ours, you want to get, it's, it's a client only program by the way, but local legends, basically you're running local live events and you become a local legend and we've got it framed up with, you know, seven books, and six foot high banners and all kinds of really, you know, really, really cool stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I would, I would go to people who, um, I would do a live event. Um, and then I would accept that it's going to, I'm not going to get a client, what is, but they say in 30 days, which I would get a client in 30 days because I, I'd be running an event within seven <clears throat> and I'd probably have four events, by the way, I'd have one a week instead of one a month. And I would push myself and it would be hard, but I just be willing to work a little bit harder, right? My plane, if your plane's on the ground. Uh, you got to work a little harder to get it into the air. Once it's in the air, it's a slightly different situation. Um, so, so that's what I'd be doing. And then I just invite people that, you know, local, like people that won awards, people that are nominated for awards, members of the chamber, members of BNI, new members of BNI are better than just old members of BNI. Cause like in the last little bit, there's something on their mind. Like they're trying to solve problems. And normally they join BNI cause they want more business. And I'll let you decide if B&I is the best way to go and get business. And in some cases it is, some cases it isn't. Some some cases you get more business, but it's, it's the kind of business you don't want, don't know. Um, you tell me, but um, those, those are the types of things I'd be doing, though. But I'd be shaking some trees for sure. Um, and I, I just, look, every day, what I would do, what, here's what I would do. And this is what we recommend for local legends, by the way. But you got to carve out every two hours. Every day you got to carve are about two hours and do um, lead gen, reach out to people and with the foresight to solve problems and help people as opposed to pitch, 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 pitch. That's where I think in 2023, it's very different than it was in say 2000. Um, so, you know, just put yourself out there. And again, don't, don't you know, that the worst drug is comfort. You know, they say that it's, um, you know, it gives sugar and it's heroin and it's cigarettes and it's caffeine, it's whatever. 
comfort is the world's worst drug that's what keeps you from getting when you won't make the cold call that's comfort when you won't you know turn on the facebook ad that's comfort when you won't do the live presentation that's comfort you gotta you gotta you know whatever your thing is but you just gotta blow that son of a gun up um anyway so that's that another question get real results for your client in record time so they stay and keep paying there we go um, once again, answer this in different ways many, many a times. But look, it looks like this, right? Um, literally built software to to do this. You, you know, hitting a home run, a bit, I think a mistake that I see common, um, a common mistake that I see in proper English here, um, is that everybody, like people are looking for the home run. And then I would invite you to a little sport called baseball. How do you win a baseball game with singles, correct? And good base running, by the way. But you, you win it with singles over home runs. And of course, home runs are amazing. And look, I love them. You love them. The team loves them. But I'll tell you, at the end of the season, the team that makes the finals, the team that wins the World Series, you'll look back at the singles and the base running more than you will the home runs, right? And yes, home runs make the highlight reel, but it's the singles that win, right? So you got to hit singles. So what I would do is instead of trying to hit a home run with digital marketing, say, which is a great idea, but rather than hit a home run, I would go, and this is what I'm going to describe as compounding, right? You ever heard of compounding interest, uh, compound interest, right? It's the eighth wonder of the world, they say. I think they say Albert Einstein said that, but I don't think he actually said it. I think it's just one of those things that was attributed to him, and then it just kind of got steam. Doesn't matter. I still... Compound interest is amazing, right? You double a penny every day for 31 days. What happens? You got $10 million on day 31. Uh, day 30, you got $5 million. Kind of awesome, right? Nobody would expect that from a penny that quickly. The problem, by the way, is it's day 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, forever. Um, but anyway, so, so compounding, what I would do is I would go to, and we have a Jumpstart 12 in our software, and we have a Deep Dive 40, a Jumpstart 40, and a Deep Dive 40. But I would go to the 12 areas and then I would improve them like each of the 12 areas by three to 5%. And then what happens is the client gets like this compounding effect, right? So let's use, um, well, let's just go cutting costs is the first one, which is a home bloody run for any client you got. Just go to their credit card statements, go to their P&L, go to their expenses. Don't cut everything, but you think you might be able to reduce their expenses by 3% right? 3%, which by the way, will get them a huge gain. I'm not going to explain all that here today, but that, that will give them a huge gain because when you, if you have 20% margins and you make a dollar, you keep 20 cents. If you go to your expenses and save a dollar, you keep a hundred cents. And of course you need to be a little bit strategic about that. Like as in don't cut out the things that are making the grass grow. Uh, but let's assume that you're not totally out to lunch and you don't do that. The magazine subscription can go, right? Um, and then a little thing called negotiation. You don't have to ax everything. They're paying five grand a month rent. Go to the landlord and commit to another three years, but at four grand. Um, or, or, you know, and there's so many other things you can do to negotiate, right? But at the end of the day, cutting costs. Do you think you could get a 3%? Um, could, you incre could you decrease their expenses by 3%? And the answer is yes, anybody. My 10-year-old daughter could go and pull that one off. What about raising their prices? Could you raise their prices by 3%, which also gets them a huge win. But again, just could you do that? And the answer is probably, right? What about market dominating position? Okay, so think unique selling proposition, but the way we teach it, market dominating position solves a problem, solves the biggest problem. So like a unique, so I got a client sold his daycares for 10 million bucks um, and he had an accelerated learning center. Okay, so an accelerated learning center. Now, that is unique, and that is obviously, no doubt, you could see, you know, like your kid going into grade one with a grade two reading, writing, and arithmetic ability. Obviously, that's pretty cool, um, but that's a unique selling proposition, not market dominating, unless, I don't know, does mom come home at night and go, gosh, I really need little Johnny to go into grade one with a grade two reading, writing, and arithmetic ability. I don't, I don't think that that's a problem for her. Uh, at the same time, I think that's something when put in front of her, she thinks is amazing and she'll buy it. She'll spend more on it, but that's not a problem keeping her awake. 
So then I would say, because if you own a daycare and you answer the phone, I guarantee two questions come up. Where are you? How much? So if you own the daycare and you're not experienced in business, guess what you, guess what you assume? Everybody buys a price location and you'd be understandable, you know, in, in determining that, right? It'd be fair enough, right? But the truth is two minutes of interviewing mums, you'll find that, um, you'll find that um, accountability is the hot button. That's her major, 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 major issue, right? Because she's dropping off the kids and they're there for eight hours and she needs to know that they're safe and having a good time and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, so a web watch as an example where you could watch your kids, make sure they're safe, having fun. I'm just missing my kid wildly for eight hours and I could log on the internet and watch little Johnny, little Susie rip around with the other kids. Do you see how that solves my, you know, the, the real hot button, the real problem that I have? So that's market dominating. So let's assume, you know, the plumber, um, you know, the plumber, what's, what's the problem? You ever hired a plumber? Okay. You ever known one to be on time? <laughs> no. Okay. So what if you put something to do with them being on time? So what I'm getting at though, you don't need to come up with something as earth shattering, let's say, as the accelerated learning center or more to the point, the web watch, right? The web watch is market dominating. But could you get a 3% improvement on what they're currently doing? Could you, could you start to get the gal on the phone um, and when they show up and provide a bonus structure for your, for your staff when they actually do get there on time, right? Like, could you make a 3% improvement there? And the answer is yes, right? And what about like... Um, cross-selling, right? You, you know, the most famous cross-sell of all time. Do you want, you answered it, fries with that, right? So you got a lawyer, do you want a will with that, right? So you come up with, a, could you come up with a cross-sell for your client that wasn't like amazing, like fries, or, you know, do you want an apple pie with that? It's not that good, but could you come up with a bad one that implemented a 3% improvement on what they were currently doing, which is nothing, by the way? And the answer is yes. But so the magic of this, there's no staff, there's no change in business model, there's no expansion, there's no new location, there's no Facebook ads, there's no funnel, there's no funnel hacking needed. You know what I mean? Like, so this is all pretty straightforward stuff, right? Um, you know, uh, um, like bundling, right? Do you want me to turn that into a meal? Like what kind of bundle do they currently have? And the answer is quite possibly they don't have a bundle at all. The answer is maybe they do have a bundle, but could you either help them implement a bad bundle that didn't sell very well, but did sell a little bit and increased a unit of sale, or take their existing bundle and just improve it by 3%. And I would dare say with a small amount of ingenuity, um, and we have intellectual property around all of this, and again, not none of which is rocket science. You just, what do they, to get there, what do you do? What do the people do before, during, and after they buy their thing, right? Um, so anyway, so you, so you, you know, you do that, um, digital marketing again, what's their current digital marketing strategy. I'm going to guess that it's pretty pathetic, right? Maybe it's not, not, I don't know. Could you improve it by 3%? Basically what happens is you improve all of these different 12 areas by 3% and you can get these monumental compounding gains that just like blow you away. And again, that's, that's part of the process of finding somebody a hundred grand in 45 minutes without spending a dollar on marketing or advertising. Because remember, it's profit acceleration software that I built, not revenue acceleration software. I'm not interested in helping you build this big company and then becoming vulnerable, right? We're interested in you building this ridiculously profitable business. And by the way, that's one of the biggest reasons why you want to be a coach consultant, because we make like 70 to 80% margins. So that's a home run. Anyway, so, so there you go, guys. That's it. Um, for today. I hope that that was valuable. I hope that that was helpful. Missed the road dog, but don't worry. He will be back next week. Um, and anyways, and that's what I got for today. So God bless folks. And I'll see you next week. Carl Bryan built Profit Acceleration Software 2.0 to train business coaches how to find any small business owner more than $100,000 in 45 minutes without them spending an extra dollar on marketing or advertising. This becomes a business coach's superpower. So as a business coach, you'll never again have to worry about working with business owners that can't afford your high-end coaching fees. 
Check us out at Focused.com.